Welcome to People First, the series of interviews between Thomas and myself on the articles that he's currently publishing on Forbes.com. Thomas, you say in the articles that, that People First leaders connect with people as colleagues and not as employees. So why is that important? Well, for me, an employee is someone that you pay to do a certain task. Back to our last conversation about resources and tools, all of our employees, whether they're being paid by the company, they're our colleagues because we work together, we are one team. So for me, actually referring to our peers and our colleagues as colleagues makes a huge difference because we're in this together. It's not just about me paying you to do a certain task. So if I, let's say I ask somebody in your team whether they see you as their colleague or their boss, what do you think they would say? I would certainly hope that they would see me as, as their colleague rather than their boss. Uh, I, I hate that word. Uh, we, we can act as leaders. A boss is somebody that just tells people what to do. And uh, quite frankly, uh, most of our peers have a job and they're much more skilled at knowing what they need to do to accomplish a certain task. So uh, I would hope that they see me as a colleague. Now, the second article was published in August, and uh, the title here was Building Teams Where People Thrive. So, what's the secret sauce for building a team where people will thrive? I think um, there is no secret sauce to anything in life, Mark. Uh, there is best practices, and then there's trial and error. And, and for me, one of the things that I really think works very well is to find the right combination of the skill set that you need to perform a certain task. And, and, and to find that right combination of individuals that when they work together, they actually accomplish great things. So for me, it's that match. It's the various personalities, it's the various skill sets, it's the various types of engagement that you can get from putting people in a room together to accomplish a task together. Now, in the article, you talk about knowing what the team needs to accomplish. Now, to me, that seems pretty obvious. Is that really a common mistake that leaders start with? Well, I actually, unfortunately, in my own experience, think that it is. Uh, very often, uh, things are, are not really spelled out. Uh, please do this. But without explaining what are we trying to accomplish with it? What does good really look like? What is it that we are trying to, to, to achieve as a collective or as a company? Uh, yes, we want to sell more products or we want to get more customers. But what is it that we are trying to deliver to those customers? What is the value we are trying to create to them? And from a people first perspective, it's really a matter of understanding what the team will accomplish mm -hmm. and what the functions that we need to do so really uh, are, are looking like or, or, or which types of functions you want to combine. And then it's also to look at the values and the competences when you are hiring the, uh, the colleagues that, that you need for, for those, um, uh, those competences. Now, in, in the first article, you talk about that every person has a role in a company's success. What about people that don't like working in teams? I mean, what is there a role for them in, in this uh, in people first? Well, of course there is. The, the thing is, it's it's becoming a, a very binary approach. It's black and white. Does people like to work in a team or not work in a team? Uh, take many of our athletes. Uh, if you take in athletics, uh, very often the uh, the the runners for one hundred. Uh, meter uh, world championship they're seen as individuals mm -hmm. look behind the scenes look at the team that are helping them it's dietists it's physicians it's their coaches uh, and they work like a team i can assure you that usain bolt wouldn't have put all those world records in front of all of us and, and all that joy that we've experienced watching him without a strong team behind him. And being an individual in a team is as important. We need to have the right uh, people that can work on the right uh, tasks in order to achieve uh, great things. And sometimes we need to do it together and other times we do it individually. So there's definitely a lot of room for individuals, individuals in a team, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but there is not room for 
self-centered and selfish individuals that only want to think about themselves in a team because that is not what a team is all about. Uh, there is this old corny saying, there's no I in team, and it's exactly <laughs> true. Yeah, that's true. Now, the article talks about intersections in a company. Uh, explain a little bit about that for me. Well, I, I think uh, every instance in life where you get friction, where you get dynamics, where you get the sparkle, is in the intersections. Where, when I talk about it in the article, it's, it's the interaction between individuals. It's the interaction between people. That is really where you have that intersection where great things happen. That's where you get the sparkles, but it's also where you get the friction. Also the positive friction where we challenge each other to become better. And, and we have to remember... So when you talk yeah. about friction, what, what, uh, what are some of the red flags then that you would see in a, in a situation? That, uh, well, I, I, I typically refer to friction in, in three different levels. There can be too much too little or just the adequate level of friction. And obviously the red flags are both when there's too little friction and when there's too much. Yeah. Too little friction is when you and I agree on everything and we're not challenging the status quo. So we're not really progressing. Too much friction is of course when we're arguing all the time without actually moving ourselves anywhere. Yeah. The right friction... situation. situation. Exactly. And the right friction is when you and I are actually challenging each other so that together we find a much better result than we would otherwise have seen. And, and that's really where the success is the sum of all those elements. So if, if I'm a manager wanting to follow people first with my team, give me some guidance on uh, what, what I should be doing to, uh, to really implement that idea well. First and foremost, Mark, you've got to stop thinking about yourself as a manager. You got to think about yourself as a leader. A manager is somebody who tells people what to do. That's a tops-down hierarchical perspective. I'm above you in the hierarchy. So, and so if you're a manager, as you asked me, then you should start perceiving yourself as a leader, where you're actually looking after the best interest in the company and the best interest of your team. And 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 a, and a leader is somebody that actually sets people up to thrive in their job, that helps them unleash their true potential, rather than thinking about them as tools in that toolbox. So, colleagues, not employees. And as Thomas just guided me, don't think of yourself as a manager. Think of yourself as a leader. Go to Forbes.com and search for Thomas Jensen to see the series of articles that Thomas is publishing. Our next interview will be coming up shortly, so make sure you set time aside to watch Thomas and myself. Thank you.